Welcome back to another Dreamcast development video. So what you're seeing here is what I've been up to the last two or three months. Uh, in the summer I put up a video of an effect that was similar to the old Sega Superscalar games, so Power Drift, Galaxy Force. And I found that effect didn't work very well with these simulated sprites for terrains, um, so backgrounds, things like that. So I, what I've decided to do is use a more traditional uh, you know, polygon style renderer for the terrains and then use these simulated sprites on top of that. So what you're seeing here in the video is really just that terrain. And there are a few different things going on here. One is the lighting. Uh, so you've got, you, you'll see here that there's a, a sun that's moving around the map which isn't really accurate as the sun would go over it but it, it serves a purpose and it's casting shadows so it's picking up details from uh, ev pretty much everywhere on the map and it's spinning round probably takes about 10 minutes maybe not even that to spin round and you can see the details and the shadows being picked up um, I'll come back to that at the end and just speed the video up so you can turn that effect on or off so that's with it on that's with it off um, whoops. you can change the uh, the render distance as well um, what it's also doing is tessellating the, the scenery so what tessellation is if you see that peak in the distance there's not a lot of detail on it but when you get closer I shall turn off the uh, turn off the lighting so when you start to get closer to it you'll see it it's gradually adding more and more detail and that works pretty well with the uh, ter I'll put, just put the lighting back on works pretty well with the the terrain but it the, what it doesn't do very well is deal with the textures so I've got a it's not really a blended texture map it's it's really just saying these these coordinates have this texture, these coordinates have that texture and what I've tried to do is try and almost like dither it um, but it looks a little bit glitchy so I'm gonna have to work on a proper blender for that. Uh, there's also fog so if you turn the fog on or off ah, there we go I hadn't turned the effect up enough um, yeah there we go so you, you can set the density of the fog I just had the, the fog density set to zero um, you can see here this looks perhaps better um, as a as a terrain so really in the distance you would expect things to um, get a bit more foggy and I think for the snow it works well um, I think the effects are perhaps a little bit um, strong in that case so you can see there that's way way too strong uh, and you can weaken it Oops. you can just weaken the effect there I've got it set to the analog controller and it's a little bit too sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of snow blinder there, aren't you? But yeah, you can you can see there. I'm not sure how well this will come out on the camera. Um, but yeah, so you, you've got you've got that effect. So that's it turned on, off, that's it turned on. I have it then. <laughs> I'll leave it. Um, so the other thing is the lighting. Um, so if I turn that off, there's a night lighting as well. Uh, so let's find something here. So there are lights uh, that are going around this scenery and they're dynamically lighting it. Um, that one's not moving very fast. But the problem you get is you do get this um, almost like pixelated effect. You can see the individual tiles when they're starting to tessellate in the distance um, looks a bit crude so there's a blend mode as well so that's it off that's it on you'll see around the edges it's smoothening it a little bit better um, so this is either doing lighting per per polygon or that's doing it per vertex or per face or per vertex um, so that look that looks a lot better um, yeah I've tried to go for a almost like a teal and orange uh, colour scheme which is overused way too much in films but I think it works pretty well for the video. Uh, I'm just looking at the viewfinder now 
that's a much darker color than is is showing. Um, yeah, so these these lights um, are moving around the map. There should be a few of them, uh, but I think one's hiding on the other side of the map. Yeah, the other one's hiding. They're all set to random speed, so you'll see this one is moving some direction. I think it's going left now. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything else on the map. It's probably hiding on the other side. Oh, there we go. There we go. There are two more lights. And if I just leave it, you'll see that they're, they're moving around the map. You'll see the big difference there. That's it, it with the, the the blending on the lights off. That's it with it on. It looks it looks better. Um, so th there isn't really a limit on how many lights you've got. It just affects the frame rate. So the more blending you do um, with more lights, it, it does slow it down. Um, so we should be able to see here. You go down here and up. Uh, there's a, a light there which isn't moving very fast. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they're moving so slow. It's it's all set to random, so yeah. Yeah, you can see that moving away into the di the distance. So this is all this is all, all dynamic. Um what I'll do is let me turn the lights off. There we go. For this uh, terrain renderer, um, this isn't rendering the lights entirely in real time. There's a background thread that does it. Uh, it just means that I'm not impacting the frame rate quite so much because it does take like half a second uh, or even a second to, to recalculate the, the light map. So what I'll do here is just leave um, the video and speed it up a little bit. Um, just so that you can see the effect um, a bit faster. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to thank uh, Andrea, who's uh, Andre rather, who's kindly uh, donated some soundtracks for use in in the game when it finally gets made. So that's what you'll be hearing in the the background now, and I'll just be quiet so you can enjoy the music and see the sped up.